What's happening, everybody? It's Bad Brad. And I've got a funny little story about the Sunset Strip days. Now, in the video that I just shot just a few minutes ago, I talked about the need to be somebody. Why do you, you know, go through all this? You know, us weekend warriors. Why do we do it? It's to be somebody. It's to be somebody, even if it's just for that 45 minutes that you're on stage. Now, back in the Sunset Strip days, I can remember a very specific time. It was me and Jamie, our singer, and Greg Babuccio, and, um, you know, our, our two horn guys. And um, I believe, I believe we were about to play Exposure 54, which was sort of a strange little club kind of off Santa Monica Boulevard. It's kind of on Santa Monica Boulevard, but a little more towards the east end. And it was like one day a week. I think it was on Sundays. It was just like the the only place to really be on, a, say, a Sunday, because the strip would be pretty much kind of dead on a Sunday. And I can remember, you know, we were we were living hand to mouth, and and we were broke, and we weren't making any money playing these clubs. We didn't make a red cent playing uh, on the Sunset Strip. You know, we would go out. And we would, you know, hand out flyers and do all this and get people into the clubs and, you know, tell all our friends and work the phones and you know, do all that stuff that you do back in the day before the internet. And we were living hand to mouth. We were wearing rags. We were, uh, for lack of a better term, we, we were just you know, one step away from being street urchins, basically. And, you know, before we would clean up, you know, we would clean up pretty good. But before that, man, we looked rough. And I can remember, it was before the show, I think, you know, after sound check, we had gone to sound check, and um, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie had like teeth that were, uh, I guess, fake, prof prophetic or some like a mouthpiece or something. And when he would pull those out, um, you know, he just had two front teeth missing, and <laughs> you know, and and we're all dressed. Our manager decided after sound check, he'd take, hey guys, I'm, I'll take you out, get you something to eat. So he took us, I think it was Rock and Roll Danny's or somewhere like that. Not, nothing fancy, but man, we, we you'd be elated to eat at a Denny's back then. For us, that was, oh, we get a real meal before our show, holy crap. And you know, I was young enough then that, that yeah, I'd mow down a huge cheeseburger and, and go play a show, right? So we're at we're eating at this Denny's, and um, you know, back in back in those days, we were relentless promoters of the band, and we knew, just like um, Poison, who had gotten their deal um, right before you know we had kind of I was on the scene that. Their draw was that they brought, you know, so many uh, young ladies to their shows. And don't think that the old men sitting up in the offices of the record labels don't appreciate that fact. Uh, no, they, they would come and they would see, oh, they've got all these girls at the show. Well, one, these guys got something going on. And two... Man, this is a heck of a party. I'm in, I'm enjoying this, you know, even if it's just eye candy, you know. But don't think those guys aren't 
you know, when you're bringing all these girls to the show, don't think that these middle-aged record company execs in their shiny suits and their BMWs and Mercedeses aren't hitting on you girls. They are. They are. And some of them, <laughs> some of them are scoring. But our manager decides, hey, guys, I'm going to take you and get you something to eat. You guys look hungry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we are hungry. And, you know, we had a late show that night, right? So we did our sound check in the afternoon and um, leave our stuff at the club. It's Exposure 54. And I think, I think one of these shows we opened for Love Hate, which was a uh, band that had gotten signed. We're kind of kind of a little more underground than uh, a Guns N' Roses. They didn't have Sweet Child of Mine, but everybody really, really liked Love Hate. They, they, were, they were Blackout the Red Room was a huge song for them. So we may have been opening for them that night. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but we played Exposure 54 a few times in some different incarnations of the band. So we're having, um, we're having this, this meal. You know, everybody's getting their cheeseburger and fries or their, their Grand Slam or, you know, whatever. Some guys might have got a chicken salad, but I guarantee you us, uh, the rhythm section, we, we, were, we were eating some, some meat and potatoes, right? So we're sitting there. And like I said, we were relentless in our promotion of the band. So if we were driving down the road and we saw, you know, a car with cute girls in it, we, one of us would get out of the car with a handful of flyers and go, hey guys, we're, we're playing down the street at Gazzari's, um, or we're playing at Exposure 54 on Sunday. You gotta see us. We got this, we've got an amazing band. You, you guys will love it. Now, oh, and you guys are really cute. Bye. <laughs> and then run back in the car. Or, you know, being uh, out on the street. I could remember one time being in uh, like Beverly Hills at our drummer's, um, our drummer's, uh, like his his parents had some like I don't know finance company or something, and he says, well, "Come ride with me up up to you know across the mount across the valley you know over the hill into uh, the you know the the cool place right." And I can remember just okay wait here on the street, <laughs> and he goes in, and I see. You know, two girls across the street, and I got, I have, I always have flyers on me. So, hey guys, we're playing in a band, and, you know, these girls knew Rick James, um, you know, and, and they were girls that, that came to our shows. You would convince these people, you know, the same with promoting on the strip. You would hand out flyers, but you were selling. You were learning how to sell. You've got to sell yourself because you're the only one that's going to do it at first, right? So we were relentless any time we saw any girls. It, and it really didn't matter what they looked like. It just mattered that they looked like maybe they would like our music. Otherwise, man, we would flirt with all, big and small. You know what? Big girls fill out the club a lot better than a bunch of little skinny you-know-whats. So it didn't matter. And we're sitting here. We're at this Denny's, and our manager's treating us to a nice meal, and everybody's happy and all this, but we're sitting there looking like street urchins. We've got <laughs> screwed up clothes. We've got, you know, our hair is all, you know, we're wearing ball caps, and we just, we look like a bunch of bums, and we are essentially bums because we're not making a penny. Right, we we may have day jobs or side hustles, but we 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 don't have a pot to you know what in, right? But we see these girls, you know, maybe the right next to it, like a, those round booths. We're all in one of those big round California booths, right? And they're in the next booth, and we're like, oh hey guys, what is? This? And the way we're looking. They just completely ignored us. Now look, you know, 
you know within an instant if you're selling or going up to, to your girls or, or whatever you know instantly whether it's a no or a yes now you can sit there and try to turn the no into a yes but you're better off with women you're better off just going eh, she's not into me and moving on you know you're not going to change that that initial reaction that they get you're not going to change it by just talking okay so these girls just completely blew us off they were better than us they they didn't want to have anything to do with these losers right so we go back home we go over the hill everybody lathers and slathers right lathers and slathers oh dial in the hair bro gotta tweak the hair get the hairspray out you know get the cheeks sunken in maybe a little eyeliner right a little guy liner and we go back across that hill Way down yonder, right across the hill, yeah. We go across that hill, and we go to that club, Exposure 54, and those lights are shining, and we got our tight pants on, and we got our shirts with the, <laughs> you know, open, fully open, and drapery, you know, and we're primped and primed. And we go up on that stage and we do our little dance and we we crank out our jams, right? And we, hey, baby, welcome to the Exposure 54 tonight, baby. Yeah, we are, you know. And we do our little, our little spiel and our little rock and roll routine. And I, you know, I, I play the guitar with my teeth and behind my head, and, you know point to people in the crowd and, you know do all that routine right you know the old 80s rock routine and I go out in that crowd after the show and who do I see sitting in the little side bleachers there this place was like it was like a big auditorium and they were like these bleachers or something off to the side see the girls from Denny's sitting it up in those bleachers but I don't look anything like that little loser that was um, sitting in Denny's having his manager buy him a $5.99 cheeseburger no oh, I don't look anything like that guy so I see the girl and I know it's her and I go right up to her I sit down on the bench next to her I said hey how you doing? I just want to see, you know, how'd you like the show? Oh, you guys were great. Oh, you guys were amazing. I said, wow, thank you so much. You know, I'd really like to stay in touch with you and, uh, you know, give you a call sometime. Um, how about giving me your number? Oh, sure. Yes, call me anytime. Oh, yes. Here's my name. My name is, you know, writes it down in a little frilly cursive and and they writes the number in big and then and then underlines and then writes call me so i said um do you remember um some guys at the denny's that tried to talk to you today because guess what that was us and you wouldn't give us the time of day. So thanks for the number. But I'm not going to be calling you.